So in this video, I'm going to go through a process costing example using the first in first out or FIFO method. And we're going to have materials and conversion separate. Materials are added throughout the process. Conversion is added throughout the process, but at different rates. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet and see what things are different from the weighted average method. First thing you probably notice is I have beginning degree of completion between the first department whip and the beginning of our columns. The big difference between FIFO and weighted average method is the way that the beginning units are treated. The next difference that you might see is I changed the title to ending degree of completion instead of just degree of completion to differentiate that between beginning degree of completion and ending degree of completion. Finally, I split the completed row into two rows, started last month and completed, and started this month and completed, because we have to keep those units that were in beginning inventory separate. Now this is a brand new example with brand new numbers, so let's start up at the beginning here and see what we've got. First of all, at the end of last month, our units had 20% of the materials added and 80% of the conversion costs. And our beginning units are 80,000 units. We had added $16,500 worth of materials and $64,000 worth of conversion costs for a total of $80,500 in our beginning whip. During the month, we started an additional 650,000 units. We added 642,000 material dollars and 950,000 conversion dollars for a total added cost of $1,592,000. Let's figure out what we have to account for during the month. We need to make sure that we have accounted for all 730,000 units, all 658,500 material dollars, all 1,014,000 conversion dollars, and that's a total amount that we have to account for of $1,672,500. During the month, we completed 647,500 units, so there are 82,500 partially completed units in ending WIP. So at the end of the month, we go out to the plant floor to determine what percentage of completion or what degree of completion these 82,500 units are at, and we decide 30% of the materials have been added, 35% of the conversion costs. So let's do an equivalent unit calculation. The first thing that we have to do under FIFO is keep those units from last month separate. So we have 80,000 units in our beginning work in process, and we had done 20% to those units last month. So this month we're going to do the complement. We're going to do the opposite of 20%. In other words, we're going to do the remaining 80% this month. We did 20% last month. We'll do 80% this month. So what we need to do is take those 80,000 units times 1 minus this amount. So this number should make sense to you. It's 80,000 units times the remaining 80%. And if you put that into a calculator, you're still going to get the 64,000. The next step in first in, first out equivalent unit calculations is to figure out how many we started this month and completed this month. Now we completed 647,500 units, but not all of those were started this month. For that matter, 80,000 of them were started last month and we've already accounted for those 80,000 units up there. The remaining units, 567,500 units, we started and completed this month, or we did 100% of the work on them this month. Ending WIP looks exactly like it did under weighted average. We have 82,500 units in ending WIP. We're going to take that times the 30% and that gives us 24,750 equivalent units with respect to materials in our ending whip. So the total equivalent units we have to account for is 656,250. 
Now, when calculating your cost per equivalent unit, this is different than weighted average. You only want to take the new money. So instead of taking all the money that we have to account for, we are only going to take this month's money and we're going to divide it by the total equivalent units. And these equivalent units are the total equivalent units that we actually did this month. So that gives us a cost per equivalent unit that you see here. Okay, so let's do the calculation for the amount of materials that are transferred out as part of the completed goods. Now remember I said that the one of the unique things about the first in first out method is that they assume those beginning dollars are going to be transferred out. And remember when we calculated our cost per equivalent unit, we didn't include those beginning dollars, but we have to include them in here. So I'm going to start out by grabbing those dollars. And then to that, I need to add the cost of the materials that we added to units that were completed this month. So let me do this. I'm going to do two parentheses here in Excel. You could do two separate calculations and add them together if you'd prefer. I'm going to take the 64,000 that we started last month and completed this month, that's in equivalent units, plus the 567,500 that we started and finished. We're going to sum those. That's the total equivalent units that we completed this month. We're going to take that times the cost per equivalent unit, and that gives us 634,287. When we're looking at the dollars left with respect to materials left in ending whip, the calculation is exactly the same as it was under weighted average. We grab the equivalent units in ending whip, and we take it times the cost per equivalent unit. Now, if we've done this correctly, our check figure should be zero. So we're going to come back in here and we're going to take the total dollars we have to account for. We're going to subtract out the materials that are being transferred out of this department with the completed units. And we're going to subtract out the material dollars that are left in ending whip. And we should have zero and we do. Now I just want to show you that if you make a mistake up here, the most common mistake students are going to make is not including those beginning dollars. And if you do this check figure, you'll see immediately, oh, I'm off $16,500. I forgot my beginning materials. And it'll remind you to put those in. So be very sure that you don't make that mistake. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back to how it should be. Let's go ahead and work through that entire process again with respect to conversion. So we had 80,000 beginning units, and those are 80% complete. So I need to take it times 1 minus the amount of work we did last month. And that's going to leave us with the amount of work we did this month, or 20%. So you can go ahead and figure that out on a calculator or in your head, and you can see that 80,000 units times 20% that we do to them this month is 16,000 units, and that's what we get. When we're trying to figure out how many units we started and completed this month, we start out again with the amount that we transferred out, but we started 80,000 of those last month. So the difference is what we started and finished this month and look, that's going to be the same in both rows, right? We started and completed, or we did 100% of 567,500 units with respect to materials and conversion because we started them this month and we finished them this month. Those two numbers will always be the same. Ending whip, we're going to do it just like we did under weighted average. I'm going to take my ending units and ending whip and I'm going to multiply that by the percentage that we've done to them this month. These are 35% complete. We did the equivalent of 28,875 units. Let's go ahead and add up these three amounts, and my equivalent units is 612,375. Again, I am only going to take the new money. The old money gets automatically transferred out. 
I'm going to take the new money and I'm going to divide it by the total equivalent units and I get a long number again. Remember if you're doing this on paper, if you're doing it by hand, to take those numbers out to six decimal places and then round your answers up in the table to the nearest dollar. It is an estimate. We don't need pennies. We only want dollars. So what are the conversion dollars that are transferred out in this problem? We're going to start out with last month's money. We have to transfer that out first. So let's grab that $64,000. And to that, we want to add the equivalent units that we did this month, left over from last month, plus the units that we went all the way from start to finish on times the cost per equivalent unit and that gives us $969,205. Ending again, we're going to do it just like we did under weighted average. We're going to take the ending WIP in equivalent units times the cost per equivalent unit and we're going to check that check figure out. All the money we have to account for minus the conversion costs transferred out minus the conversion costs left in ending WIP is zero. We can bring this across. So the materials transferred out plus the conversion transferred out. The materials left in ending WIP plus the conversion left in ending WIP. And my check figure is all the money we have to account for minus what is transferred out minus my ending WIP is zero. If I move everything over just a little bit and look at that journal entry, the journal entry is going to be the same as it was for the weighted average method. We're just picking up the total dollars and debiting it to department two WIP and crediting it to department one WIP. And of course, this is the first department WIP. It's moving into a second department. Let's go ahead and calculate the cost per unit transferred out. And I had $1,603,493 transferred out, which represents 647,500 physical units that were moved to the second department. And that gives me a cost of $2.48. Now, under the FIFO method, we can't add these together. They're not the same. They are not the same. So you cannot use that method to calculate the cost per unit transferred out. You have to do the division. The reason for that is because those beginning units had money attached to them that is not included in that equivalent unit calculation. And this is the end of process costing under the first in, first out method with materials and conversion being added at different rates.